I was six or seven years old at the time, and I, I just saw needles and I saw this tape, and I didn't know what what was going on, and I just assumed it was really, really bad until I found out that my mother was doing heroin. I didn't know what it was. We don't really talk to her much, which is unfortunate, but like, it's just gotten to the point where, um, you know, they kind of cut that off a bit. Hi, my name is Derek and I'm a filmmaker and I got my start at RealWorks. Totally love the RealWorks experience. I still like have some of my best friends that came out of there. I don't think many people can say they made a movie at age 16. Like I had such a huge edge to some people that were in college because they were like, how do you even know how to do this stuff? Works gave me the confidence and like the storytelling ability to be able to really make films and understand it at such an interesting age. They really like shaped who I am in a way because I wouldn't have been a filmmaker. It was one of my mother's friend's houses and I remember going there and there was, it must have been a party or something. People were drinking and I saw these big, I guess, masking tape or rubber bands or stretchy material, elastic of some kind. You know, the ones you see on the doctor shows or when you're watching a drug movie. And um, I was six or seven years old at the time and I, I just saw needles and I saw this tape and I didn't know what, what was going on and I just assumed it was really, really bad until I found out that my mother was doing heroin. I didn't know what it was. I remember when I grew up in Queens, like, I'd be home and my mom would be playing with some kind of white powder and I'd be like, Mommy, what is that? And she would tell me it was baby powder. And I remember that, like, not thinking of it when I was younger, but when I grew up learning and seeing what cocaine looks like, I was... I finally like put two and two together. I'm like, okay, that's what she was doing when I was five, four, like with me watching. Growing up, I've heard the stories about my cousins, Heather and Jenna, and their mom, Maya and Carrie. But hearing them talk about their childhood memories makes me feel like I didn't know anything about them. Hearing this makes me look at them in a new way. We were never sure if she'd leave them somewhere or the people she associated with would kidnap them or harm them. I remember one time she uh, took me and my sister to a hotel with this guy named Frankie for New Year's. And um, we had a huge water jug filled with money, like all bills from when we were younger, from my, I guess my baptism, I guess from like just people, uh, us putting money into the thing, my dad putting money in, I don't know, but it was completely, almost filled to the brim. And um, my mother told my sister and I that we had to go somewhere with her. And I said, why are you taking our money? And she told us that she would get us toys if we didn't say anything to my dad. And so we went and she got us toys. She promised that we'd make cookies and we never make cookies. It's weird that I remember like so detail of that because I was so young. I don't know where we were. I just remember that we were in a hotel room and when my mother was in, a sho in the shower and my sister was outside and probably with the m guy that my s mother was seeing, um, I called my dad and I told him, I said, I, we're at this hotel or s it's on the phone, the address, and I read it to him and we were, we were back home. It was just heartbreaking that children had to be subjected to a lifestyle like that and people like that. And um, it was just a heartbreaking existence while she was with them. There had been times where things were so bad between Carrie and Willie that I went over there like in the middle of the night to get the girls and bring them back here. Even a simple birthday party could be a disaster in this household. My mother said I can call my friends over and I could have a party at the house. I had my party dress on. It was black. It had um, hot green and hot pink. 
borders on the sleeves and around the waist. And it looked very pretty and cute for my eighth birthday. And next thing I know, this is when my dad was putting clothes in the car and telling us that we had to leave. It was very hard at those times, very hard. But someone had to make a decision of what to do. So I made a decision to take care of these girls. Not saying she was a bad mother, because she wasn't. Just things happened at the wrong time. I had to tell my friends that I wasn't coming home or I wasn't going to be able to attend my own birthday party. So it was upsetting. A kid blowing out a birthday cake with like little tears in her eyes, you know, that's not a happy memory. I hope, to tell you honestly, I hope Heather blocked it out because it was very, very heartbreaking. They were fighting over custody of my sister and I, and my mother wanted us, but she didn't fight for us as much as she could have. And my dad had the support of my grandma, Shirley. Well, it was horrible. Carrie came to court. She accused me of sleeping with Willie. <laughs> She accused me of loving her husband. And then she told her lawyer that I'm not really her mother. My f husband fooled around with an Italian woman and she was born. And so I said to the lawyer, then why have I taken care of her all these years? Why did I bother bringing her up? <laughs> Why did I cry every night? <laughs> the judge told me that I was making the decision for who we were going to live with and if I understood that and if I was okay with making that decision and why I was making that decision. And I chose to live with my father for both my sister and myself, which was probably one of the hardest decisions I had to make because I was so young and I didn't know how much that decision was going to shape my life. Can you ever forgive her? No, and I'll tell you why. When she was trying to get off the drugs and she was going cold turkey, I took care of her for five days and it was the most disgusting degrading, horrible, nightmarish experience that I wouldn't wish on anybody, what I witnessed and what I had to go through with her. And after the five days were over, instead of going on with her life and being there for her children and her family, she went back in the streets to go shoot up. Even though their mother didn't help them become the people they became, others did. Well, my dad played a big part being my role model when I was younger. I used to always want to go to work with him, do everything with him. Heather, my sister, also was a role model. When I was a child, my dad was basically one of my role models. I respected him a great deal for what he did. He was a strong individual to fight for his children. Well, that was very nice of him because I would consider myself a role model. Like I said, I took, I took after my mom. My mom taught me and I taught them through her. And she, I characterize her as a role model. And she instilled a lot of, a lot of values in me. And that passed on through me to them. And it worked. After their college graduations, they chose to become teachers. I hope that I can help children who have similar experiences and help them through it through their hard times. I actually want to get my master's in social work so I can do that even more than being the teacher in the classroom. I'd work with kids as in groups who have like divorced parents and all that. I have goals and I have aspirations that I do and will achieve. And the thing that is dri driving me to achieve that is to not be like my parents, not fall into that category, not have other things driving me in the negative direction 
but have things driving me in the positive, which I do. I have my friends and I have my family who still guide me and still believe in me and still try to help me achieve those goals. Since today is Mother's Day, um, are you going to call her today? Um, that will be a negative. <laughs> um, actually, I called my father this morning and wished him a happy Mother's Day <laughs> because, um, you know, for the most part, he's the one that did raise me. Um, I'm celebrating Mother's Day with my aunts instead of my mother. Um, they are close mother, maternal figures more than she was. And um, I called my grandmother. Well, actually, I haven't called grandma yet. I will call my grandmother and wish her a happy Mother's Day. But um, I don't. I don't even think about my mother today, to be honest with you. Oops. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for reminding me. But I got my data card. If you like this video, make sure to hit like, comment, and subscribe to keep up to date with all our RealWorks YouTube videos. And don't forget to watch the films of the next generation of filmmakers. At RealWorks, we believe that when you change the storytellers, you change the world. Support RealWorks.